Welcome to another Eduro video. Uh, in this video, I wanted to show you some of my favorite tips and tricks for getting outside of the filter bubble that we are in when we do Google searches. Now, hopefully you've done uh, either some research on the filter bubble, you've read some blog posts from us, looked at some of our other resources we've shared here at Eduro Learning around the filter bubble uh, and the idea of, of how that works. So here are a couple of my great my best tips that I like um, when I'm teaching kids and I use these starting in a roughly fourth grade so fourth through twelfth grade these are great tips to have so I'm going to for this for this video I'm going to use the idea of climate change and I like using something when I demonstrate this that is something global because part of the aspect of this is something global it doesn't have to be it could be something very local to you uh, and all of this stuff still works so I'm going to kind of show you both of those the idea of how do we get outside the filter bubble and we get a global perspective on things and also how can you get a very local perspective on things for those of you in elementary and middle school where maybe you're worried about reading levels I'm going to show you some hacks even on how you can find resources that might be at a reading level for your students. I'm going to go through this pretty quickly, knowing that this is a video that you can pause and replay as you need. So we're going to get started and I'm going to use climate change as my search term. So you see here, I've already got climate change into my Google search engine. And when I just type in climate change, which is what most kids would do, uh, you notice I get 174 million results. Now in the last video, we talked about how to read the search result page and why these things kind of come up in the order in which they do. So if you haven't viewed that, you might want to go back and view that one. In this video, what I want to talk about is how do we know, like the way, the way Google is working at the moment I'm making this video is I'm getting, I type in climate change, I'm getting a, a broad overview of a definition of my term, I'm getting the top news stories or the top stories, and again, I don't, I've never heard of talking points memo. I don't know how trustworthy of a site that is. The New York Times depends on if you trust the New York Times or not and The Guardian, right? So these are news outlets which are more trustworthy. If Google is telling me that the talking point memo is trustworthy, I have to decide that for myself whether or not I'm going to believe Google. Underneath that then we get what are the raw results. And again, this is out of 174 million, uh, a million uh, results. This is Google telling us this is the best they have uh, in the order in which they have them that they believe uh, works for us or for me because of what I've clicked on in the past. So there is some already in here, the filter bubble has started to exist. It probably is giving me results based on some information it has about me. It knows I'm logged into my account, so it knows what kind of links I click on. It knows I'm located in Seattle and it knows how people in Seattle majority or the majority of people uh, think. And so you get results that way. It knows I'm on a Mac. So it, it gives me results based on that. It knows I'm male. I get results based on that. So there's a lot of information that's going into creating this filter bubble just for me. So if you're following along uh, on your own computer, you might get results in a different order. You might be getting ads where I'm not getting ads. And there's a ton of different little signals uh, that Google calls them that are involved in this. So how do we break out of this? And not only how do we break out of this, how do we help kids understand, for me, the difference of perspectives? That's what the internet offers. It offers us different perspectives that we can see a single topic. Here's the hack that I use with students. It has nothing to do with the quotes. A lot of that is worked in um, to Google. So the hack that I like to use, and again, I start teaching this in fourth grade, is at the end of my search term, I type in site colon. When I do site colon, it is now going to limit the search results to any domain that I choose. For example, if I do site colon gov, notice there's no space, just site colon gov. I'm now going to get results that only end in dot gov or dot gov. So as I, as I um, scroll through this, you will notice the first result comes up is NASA, climate.nasa.gov. It's a government site. As I scroll below the top stories, notice that they've changed, or at least the first one has changed. I come down here, and all of a sudden, you notice the next site is epa.gov, epa.gov, epa.gov. These are sites that weren't on the first page before based on the filter bubble. You notice I've taken Wikipedia out. Not that I don't trust Wikipedia. I personally do, but you know, it gives me one perspective. I am now able to search the, the topic of climate change through one perspective. And that perspective would be the government of the United States. 
Now, we can have a great conversation in class around how much we trust the government of the United States. The really cool thing and the power of the internet with kids today is you can go anywhere in roughly half a second. So you're going to notice, I'm going to come back up here, and I'm going to add to the end of the .gov.cn. So now I've got gov.cn, and now I find myself at the government of China. So all of Chinese um, uh, websites end in .cn. So now when I scroll down through my results, you'll notice that I get the government of China, and all I'm getting is their perspective. So now I can go through and I can have my class, if we're studying climate change, what is the U.S. perspective on climate change versus what is the Chinese perspective on climate change? I can go to the U.K., again, about 0.45 seconds. I can go to Australia. I can go to name that country. Here is South Africa. And is South Africa's government going to have different research than, say, the U.S. government or Australia's government? And this really allows kids to open up access to different points of view. Now, I can do this with any domain that I want after site colon. So another one I might use is I might use edu. Edu are educational institutions. .edu are educational institutions in America. Again, as I scroll down through, you'll see today uh, Brookings edu is the number one hit. Puget Sound State is number two. And so here we have going through, again, you'll notice all of the URLs end in .edu. I can again do this for anywhere I want to go in the world. So maybe I want to see what is coming out of institutions of education in Australia. So I just add .au to the end of my search term. So now I'm looking at educational institutions in Australia. Not everybody in the world uses EDU. Some governments don't follow these just regular rules. For much of the world though, when it comes to educational institutions, a lot of them use AC for academic institution. So now I'm looking up climate change through academic institutions in Thailand. Or I can go, let's see if France works. Oh, France doesn't use that. I will see if France uses EDU. France doesn't use EDU. At this point, what I would have to do is I would do a Google search to what are the domains of universities in France. If I see something that starts to line up, that's where I would come back up here and use these. So sometimes you have to investigate if you want to look for a perspective. Again, the whole idea behind this is to get one perspective at a time. When we're talking to students about getting a body of information to support a point, I want them to understand what perspective they are getting that information from. Are they getting it just from the government and which government? Or have they checked four or five different government sites and everybody is saying the same thing? That is much better research than even clicking on, say, the first three links in a search result where you are just trusting for Google to come up with those, with those, with those answers for you. This is a great hack. Again, it doesn't need to be global. Here's another way you can use site colon. If it's something that I want to do local, or let's say I'm an elementary teacher, and being a fourth grade teacher, one of my favorite things to teach was the Oregon Trail. One of the things I always struggled with kids was finding resources on the Oregon Trail written at an appropriate grade level for fourth grade. One of the nice things about schools here in the US, and doesn't matter where you are in the world, you can take these resources, or in your country, you might find that there is a string of domains that work for you. So I can do Oregon Trail, site colon K12 dot, I'm in the state of Washington dot US. So in America, all K-12 institutions have the right, not that they all use it, but have the right to the domain k12.wa.us or k12.yourstate.us. Because in the state of Washington, we teach the Oregon Trail in fourth grade, roughly all of the material that I am going to find is going to be at a fourth grade reading level for my kids. And as a teacher, anything that I find here is probably also going to be materials that other teachers are using at the fourth grade level. Now, Here's another thing I would do. 
if I had a class of fourth grade today, I might have one click, one group of students looking at how is Oregon Trail portrayed through the state of Oregon, and then maybe have another group look at the state of Oregon. And you notice I just changed the two letter country code. I also know that the Oregon Trail went through Idaho. I also know that the Oregon Trail went through Montana. And so I might have groups in my classrooms looking at how the Oregon Trail is being researched, talked about what materials are being used to learn about the Oregon Trail in different states. If I was say, if I was, for example, having kids maybe doing a report on the different forts of that state, I can then look for resources in the exact same way. So for example, the Fort Walla Walla was an important fort or missionary, right? Along the trail here in the state of Washington. So I'm now going to change this to Walla Walla Fort for the state of Washington. And again, I get the massacre that happened. I get a quiz that was created. I get some other, here's a document. Notice the little DOC telling me that this is a chapter seven doc that I can have parts of. And all of a sudden I'm getting information again that is written at roughly a fourth grade level that has to do with the different forts. So if I'm having students say, for example, research different forts along the Oregon Trail, I'm now not only just looking for the fort and just going to Google and just typing in anything, I'm doing some good refined searching around information that A, is accessible to my students and B, is pretty close, if not appropriate, for kids to be finding. Psych colon is probably the greatest hack that I have found in education. And it gets kids outside the site bubble and it allows us to look at one perspective at a time when it comes to searching the web. It is so good that we should be teaching it to every kid starting in fourth grade and expecting kids to search with it afterwards. Here's another hack. I'm going to go back to climate change and I'm gonna go back to site colon gov. So I'm going to go back to climate pay climate change from the perspective of the government. If you want to find these domains, you can find them by just doing a Google search for domain extensions by country, and you can get a list of every country. We'll even create a, a list for you, or we'll make a blog post that has those as well. So be looking for that at the Adaro site. So climate change site colon gov. Now, one of the other things that the internet allows us to do, and we don't think of it this way, but it is a historical record of what we believed at certain times. Because Google came out, you know, roughly around 1994 or so, and the internet as we know it today came out a little bit before that with the internet escape, a lot of this stuff has been um, archived and there have been forgotten web pages. Those forgotten web pages are so fascinating when we start doing research with kids. So I'm going to do climate change site colon gov. I'm then gonna come over here to the end of the little bar and I'm gonna click on tools. And now I'm going to get a drop down box of any time. When I click on any time, you notice I get some uh, responses, canned responses here or times that I can go back. Maybe I wanna know what did the government think in just the past year. I click on past year. And all of my links now, you can see here, have a date of when they were last updated. This one was updated January 17th, 2017. Some of the latest information we have on climate change. March 20th, September 29th, 2016. Something like climate change, where the information is changing so fast, a year might not be, might be too long of a time. This is something that to this day still blows my mind. If I do the past 24 hours, I am looking now at results that are just on the topic climate change, just from the US government, and just updated within the past 24 hours. Check this out. I've got 13 hours, year, year, 13 hours old, 20 hours old, 12 hours old, seven hours old. In fact, if I scroll to the bottom, you'll notice that there are over 10 Google search result pages of sites that have been updated in the past 24 hours just from the US government 
just on the topic of climate change. That is the world we live in and the world we need to be able to teach students to search and use. Now, if I wanted to, I could also go back in time. I click on custom range and you notice I get a custom range box that I can then say, go back and say, well, I wonder what the U.S. government thought from the years 1990 to 1992. What were we thinking around climate change? And in less than half a second, I am transported back to 1990 and 92, and I find these web pages that have not been updated since December 15th, 1991, or December 15th, May 15th, March 16th, 1990. And all of a sudden, I can now split my class up and I can have students researching the same topic of climate change, looking at one perspective, the US government, and seeing over time how that perspective has changed. Now, if you put all of this together, being able to go back in time, being able to look at the most relevant information, getting multiple sources from different governments, different educational institutions, and you put that all together, that is an information search worth teaching kids today. That is how you get outside the bubble. That is how you do research in the year 2017 and beyond. Two quick hacks, site colon, and then click on tools and anytime. Those two things alone are a great way to start getting outside the filter bubble and teaching our kids to do focused research on the internet today.